Hey, good morning or good afternoon, friends. Nice to see you, Pastor Pete here at Abundant Life Church. And uh, as is our usual Wednesday custom, it's time for some coffee. So get your coffee mug, uh, your cup, your cup, your travel mug. I don't know, well, however it is you to uh, take your coffee, but get your coffee mug, get your Bible open. Today we're going to look at Psalm 16, uh, specifically verse 8. Just taking a minute. Uh, the whole psalm is beautiful and wonderful as as, as the whole Bible is, but. Uh, as we usually do, just take one short verse and uh, see what God has to say to us today and encourage each other. So take out your coffee, get your Bible going. Uh, Psalm 16, 8. I always enjoy our time just hanging out together. And, and I was spent the weekend with some wonderful friends. And uh, this is one, one point of inspiration I brought back from my time of meditation on a little retreat that Terry and I were on. So here is Psalm 16, 8. It says, this is David speaking, and he says, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Let me repeat it. I have set the Lord always before me, and because he's at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Really uh, just a very strong declarative statement, and one that I think uh, I'm inspired to, you know, Put on a card on the mirror, put on a post-it note, stick it on a on a, a memo that I stick in the dash of the car. Like remember that remember a couple things about this. One, the first one is David says, I have set the Lord always before me. I am being deliberate. And I should say this, I Pete, you, you know, put your own name in there. I am being deliberate and intentional about being in God's presence. And he says, always. I'm doing it at all times. I am not. Uh, just running to him when I'm desperate and I'm not just rejoicing with him when all is good, but at all times, in good times and bad times, in peaceful times and desperate times. You know, it makes me remember even my wedding vows, you know, and if you, we all have some variation or some version of in sickness and in health, in good times and in bad, uh, in, in, in weakness and in strength. It, it, with when we're rich and when we're poor. We hear Paul even talking about that in the New Testament. And David is saying that I have set the Lord. I have done it. Make sure that I am in the Lord's presence always. Now, how do we do that? Real simple. Well, <laughs> simple to say, uh, simple maybe to rake a couple of notes off of this, and then uh, it takes a lot of hard work to discipline ourselves and to practice it, right? But here are some things that you can do about being always having the Lord before you. First is to read and study and discuss his word. That's how you come to know about him. You can know him in that way. Um, but really, it's important to have the facts, to have in mind the attributes of God, the character qualities of God, the the way that he has dealt with his people and is dealing with his people and will deal with you and will help you, will be there for you. He is, it's all laid out in his word. Secondly is to pray and meditate and listen. It, how do you have a relationship with somebody unless you really get to know him or her? How, how is it that you and your friends, you and your family, your coworkers, you know, maybe you have a new coworker and then after you get to know him better, you're like, wow, I really like that person. Well, what is it that happened that caused you to really come to like them so much? You spent time together. You spoke to each other. You listened to each other. You thought about the things that you were hearing and understanding. Even the meditation is meditating on the things that you read in God's word. So read, study, discuss his word to know about him. Pray, meditate, listen to know him. The next thing is to worship and praise him for who he is and what he's done the hope you have in him. This is a way to experience him. God says that I will inhabit the praises of my people. So when you're praising him, even alone, you don't have to go to church for this. You don't have to put on music for this. It says you're praising him. It doesn't have to be, even be musical to do it. Just lifting a word of praise, saying, God, I love you for who you are. You're amazing. This is what David does over and over again. He says, you have, you have rescued me. You have set me on the course of life. You have restored me. You have redeemed me from the pits of hell. When I sinned and I sinned against you, God, and I came and confessed, you put me back together. This is praise and worship. And this is a way of experiencing God. This is a way of expressing and then have in the midst of expression, God himself visits and inhabits those praises and you know his presence and you're ever before him. And then the last thing is in serving and giving. 
and fellowshipping and reaching out and ministering to the needs of others and proclaiming the gospel, doing what God has asked you to do with the gifts that he has given you is a way that you express God. So we can know about him in his word. We know him better and we know him more thoroughly and deeply in our prayers and in our meditations. We experience God in our worship and our praise. And then when we're expressing him, when we are living out and we're giving other people an understanding of God because of how we're living and how we're serving them. God is always before me. Well, the second half of this psalm, this verse anyway, says, because he is my, my right hand, I shall not be shaken. So here's David saying, God is in the position of greatest strength towards me. God maybe has even made himself vulnerable, but has put himself at my right hand so that in my time of need, his strength in me, his shield over me, his protection all around me will make me the most capable. So it's not just a place of running to for refuge, but it's a place of because he's there, I'm going to be able to fulfill the purpose and the calling that he has on my life. The, the, this, the, this picture being at my right hand is portrayed many, many times in scriptures. It's very, very often uh, is taken up for the weak and for the helpless and for the needy. That God shelters with his right, mighty right hand. God uh, stands at my right hand so that I can make it up out of this difficult situation. Uh, God cares for the poor being their steady right hand. It has really a symbolism to it that's kind of military. Uh, uh, you know, it's a, I remember being in, uh, as, a, as a young kid, being in the bands in high school, the marching band, and then also in some drill teams and, and whatnot. And not, not in a military ROTC thing, but just as a part of a community activities that we were involved with. And guide right was always a key thing. Guide right, look to the right. The person on the right is the one who has the strength, who has the, the knowledge, who has the discipline. And in this way, God is saying, I'm at the right so that when you stand and when you are, are about to, to deliver, or even if you are not capable fully, I am at your right. You should not fear. You should not lose trust or confidence. You will not be shaken. And David's saying that back. I'm not going to be shaken. I have God at my right hand. I will not be shaken. I will trust him. I will have confidence in him. I have hope in him. And I now can deliver those things to other people. I'm not going to be distracted or deterred. I'm not going to let anything distract me from what God has called me to do. I'm going to fulfill his call and his purpose. And so, friends, today, that's my encouragement to you. Take this Psalm 16a. Take the whole psalm. You know, you know me. I like the context. Read the whole thing, but Psalm 16, 8, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. And that's my prayer for you today, Lord. A, a prayer to the Lord today. Bless the Lord, if you will. That's my prayer for you, that you will bless the Lord in the same way. Set him before you always. Make him the number one priority always. And trust and have confidence because he's at your right hand. You'll be able to have a full life and you'll be able to give the good news of his great love and mercy to all that you meet. I pray that you have a wonderful, rich day today, friends, in Jesus' name. Amen.